these are the uh, old reed valves leather valves pulled out uh, just from one of the base units and uh, now I'm cleaning up the old uh, glue residue so that I can uh, stick them back these are all uh, left in a flat place dry place uh, to make them straight all were uh, curled up but now as you can see on one end you still have uh, we still see some uh, old glue residue so what I'm doing is I'm uh, cleaning it uh, with a stiff uh, bristle I think this is a hog uh, hair uh, stiff bristle on one end we have uh, a little not so stiff this is stiff initially I thought I should clean it with uh, acetone a very little acetone but then I realized uh, by trial and error that this was good enough but only thing is I do it under a microscope so that I can exactly see if there is any uh, damage to the uh, valve and just brush just enough for you no know, to remove the old residue and uh, not brush it more than that because this is so stiff it can actually uh, damage the leather uh, uh. so once that is done I measure I measure because there are assorted sizes I measure it this is approximately about 3.8 millimeters and I keep it under uh, 3.8 uh, just uh, making a small note here <coughs> sorry about that this is 3.5 millimeters 3.8 I think this can fit under 3.8 I just thought maybe it's a millimeter more or sorry 0.1 millimeter more <coughs> but then I think it belongs to this then I have 3 millimeters and 3.3 millimeters so as and when I clean and <coughs> keep a, a valve aside I just put a one and later I can count and see if I have everything and once this is all done <coughs> I can actually uh, check on the reed block to see uh, the dimensions required <coughs> the actual dimensions required now here is the reed block I removed it uh, let me some <coughs> put some more light So <coughs> all the reed blocks are uh, sorry the valves are removed and uh, this residue I thought of cleaning with uh, acetone the old uh, this is where it was stuck as an experiment I removed uh, one of the uh, reed valves <coughs> this I removed initially I thought of removing each reed valve uh, you know cleaning it up and after the uh, uh, sorry reed, uh, uh, reed plates and then uh, once the leather uh, valve work was done to remount it then I thought <coughs> it's a lot of labor because uh, the wax is done very well nothing is cracked and this I removed just as an experiment and with a very sharp uh, knife I <coughs> cleaned up the uh, uh, the old wax and collected it in a bin this is the knife I used very sharp and I need to be careful so that I don't damage the wood so the uh, remaining part I'll heat it up at a low, low temperature maybe at uh, 40 degrees Celsius I have a temperature controlled uh, sorting station and uh, uh, <coughs> this is the tip I plan to use but I have other tips as well so with that uh, I plan to clean the remaining part and I already have the wax ready when I need it now 
the mount, mounting the outside valve is not an issue. It's a very straightforward thing. But mounting the ones inside will be a challenge because I decided not to remove any of these plates. Mounting it inside is a real big challenge. Real challenge. But I think I need to, it's a surgical precision almost. I need to do that. First is the cleaning with acetone, all these things inside. And then with uh, some tweezers, after applying the uh, Yuhu glue, which uh, I'm planning to use, I'll try and see if I can mount it without disturbing these, uh, without removing the reed plates. If that works, I'll first complete the work inside and then uh, do the work outside. This is what I plan to do. And uh, I kept a lot of things ready for this work. So uh, I'm trying to collect all the uh, old wax as and when I s scrape it off in, in this bin and then uh, transferring it to uh, another uh, jar. This is a jar I kept. This, as you can see, I have some scrape, scraped away uh, uh, wax. And uh, that's all in the planning. So this, I'll show you how I do it on the, uh, using the microscope so that I don't damage the, uh, the well, the close up. I don't know whether I can get the shot. You can see there is some residue. And once the, that is done, depending on the, uh, the size, I am actually placing it in this tray. I know uh, each bin, what is the dimension. I have made a note of it. This is bin number one. And uh, that way there are different dimensions here. I am collecting everything. And then once I measure the actual uh, you know, required length, for example, perhaps I'll measure it this way and I'll know. Not a good angle, but uh, essentially that is what I intend doing. I'll measure it that way and then I'll know what is the length of the valve required uh, for that work. So, this is uh, cleaning of uh, the old uh, glue residue on the leather valves. I know it's a distant shot, but uh, this is how I do it. I check it under the microscope and then uh, brush off the uh, old uh, residue, uh, glue residue very careful so that I don't damage the uh, uh, leather valve. So once that is done, I just measure with this ruler scale. This is 3.8 millimeters. So I just place it under the, I'm collecting everything in this uh, tray. So that's 3.8 millimeters and I just mark it here. So I have the exact count of uh, what I'm, so I'm just left with uh, one more valve. Rest all done. So that will be uh, 12 plus 12, 24 plus the inside one, 48. 48 valves for one reed block in the base section. 
So there's a lot of work uh, because the treble section has uh, 41 uh, reed plates multiplied by two in many cases, but not really because many of the reed plates in the treble section do not have uh, valves. And the other uh, reed block in the bass section will be all the more difficult because those are uh, lower frequency and it has a supporting wire on, on, on many of the leather uh, valves. So I'll have to work on that separately. So as I as I progress, I will uh, keep uh, taking some videos of that work. I decided to remove the reed plates after all because uh, I tried on one to uh, uh, re-stick the leather valve uh, with the reed plate still present. It was difficult. Forget about sticking. Even the cleaning of the uh, inside part after the le leather valve was removed, cleaning with I, I used acetone, not acetone. I initially thought of using acetone, but then used thinner, uh, <laughs> the less dangerous of the two. Alcohol I didn't want to use because of the water content. I didn't want any water residue on the reeds uh, because we all know it will rust eventually. Fortunately, there is no significant rust on the reeds. There is traces of uh, rust, but no significant uh, rust. Then I thought, okay, you know, it's uh, very laborious, but why not do it the right way at least uh, i'll be able to clean the reed plates well so this is the end of it i not only removed all the plates but uh, with a soldering iron i uh, try to remove as much as possible the old wax still you can see some in fact right now i kept a, a small room heater in front of this one uh, just to see if i can level out everything but I think it is not required. As I start mounting the reeds, uh, reed plates rather, I'll heat up each one and uh, make sure it sits level. Otherwise, I think it's good. Cosmetically, yes, I need to just uh, clean up uh, uh, this one so that it looks nice. And uh, I numbered all the reed plates. I just gave my own number. It has two rows, A and B rows. So uh, I started... Uh, by you know i just wrote a1 on one and b1 whatever side i took it uh, took as reference so it has 12 uh, in each uh, row or column whatever you call column in this case yeah two columns and then there are uh, 12 rows in each column so columns i named it as a1 and b1 <coughs> in fact it is a and b uh, it indicates that this is 1 and the other one is 12. This is 12. So I marked it as A12 and B12. So essentially 24. So likewise, based on that, I just wrote uh, A1, A2 to A12 here and uh, this one. And as, I, as the reed plate cooled off after uh, the removal, I placed it in this uh, plastic bin. So this is from B1, for example. Now the job is to clean these uh, reed plates. Some are already cleaned. I think the this one, if you see, the old uh, leather uh, uh, that was stuck here. Where was it stuck? It was stuck here. It's all cleaned because I tried to clean uh, as he saw it once and uh, on one side that is the open side and this is still left as is so this is the old residue the glue residue i'll need to remove that now it is easy to clean uh, this can be cleaned uh, using the i think the thinner is uh, the better option to clean once that is done i will you know heat up and then remove all this uh, uh, wax the old wax and keep it clean. Now where did I remove it from? This one. So that way these are all untouched on both sides. 
Now this also looks like I have cleaned uh, on one side. Now both, both sides are cleaned in this. There are no uh, glue residue, there is no glue residue in this. Take Some are cleaned on one side, this side is cleaned. So now I will have to uh, make sure these are all ready for installation after the necessary cleaning the old uh, uh, wax and the uh, uh, this one uh, the glue residue and this is the uh, these are the the leather uh, i think i took a shot of this earlier so these are all different dimensions i have so i'm still falling short of two that's the reason i made a count of all this i don't know visually maybe i missed it uh, missed uh, seeing the missing uh, valves to, uh, to begin with and later I don't think I misplaced anything nor did I drop anything here so so these are the in millimeters the uh, the length and I think width although I did not measure it looks the the width is the same I need to measure just for the record I'll measure it so these are the different lengths and these are the quantities available and the total is 46 I need 48 because uh, 12 times uh, 4 so 2 missing but I have uh, purchased some uh, just uh, the leather I'll see if I can make uh, my own uh, reed valves too I'll first use up all these things. Now they are all straight. Initially they were all curled up. So that is it. And uh, something else I wanted to mention. Mm. Okay, at this time I'm not getting it. And <laughs> here is the old wax I collected. I wanted a glass jar, not from the kitchen. I didn't want it from the kitchen. <laughs> So I purchased this from the dollar shop. I wanted a glass lid. Unfortunately, it has a plastic lid and the plastic cap. I wanted a glass lid and a cap so that in case I store any uh, chemical like acetone or uh, thinner, I didn't want the cap uh, melted away. Anyway, so now I have this uh, old wax, but I also have new wax. But I'll use this. I'll just melt it and then pour it into the other mix or maybe use it as is. This can serve uh, probably at least half side, uh, half, uh, you know, half section of one side minimum uh, if used well. So that's about it. Some of the tools I used or I think I showed earlier, I used uh, this knife to very carefully. This is very good for cleaning, but then we should be careful not to, you know, pick on the wood itself this is very sharp and uh, so at the moment this is where I am stopping and then I'll go ahead uh, after I clean the reeds when I remove the treble side I have more boxes like this and then I'll uh, store uh, the reeds this way because it is very easy to you know get confused with all these reeds and I don't want to end up removing and then uh, uh, replacing them in a different location later want to avoid that so that's it for now I'll come back with another video uh, when I begin the work